got us a great yeah, interview today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just heard her voice saying that Jesus can, can work, work it out. out. I call her the hit woman. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, you have to tease them because, you know, when, when people come in and they got so much style and flair, yes, yes. you know, I call them the hair turners. Yes. Because they turn your head when they open their mouth and say, yes. amen. Who do we got with us today, sir? We got a flat foot singer. Flat foot? I thought she, I thought she had good arches in her feet. She does, you know. But that's my term I use for people that uh, just okay, cause come I, from the gut. Yeah, I thought for sure she had arch, good arches. Yeah, she does. Okay, now can I finish Lord. my yeah, introduction? Well, yeah, I guess you can. Okay, you know? thank you. Praise it, the Lord. It's your world. It's my you know? turn. I'm just a squirrel trying to get in, in on this. Well, okay, thank All you. Right, here we go. Now back to me. Yeah. This is um, she's a first lady. She's a preacher. She's a singer. Doctor. She's a doctor. Grew up in the grand old church of God and Christ. This is a church? She's, she can dress, but more importantly, she has Jesus and the love of hey, Jesus. Hey, Sean. None other than the internationally known, whose voice is very distinguished. You cannot confuse her with anyone. Uh-huh. First Lady, yes. Siobhan Wells. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> we are so honored. And privilege to have you on the Good Morning Show, my sister. Y'all had enough this morning. <laughs> we are. We we have been. We've had a good week of praise and worship on this show. And, and we are so excited to have you. Yeah. You know, I'm just checking out this photo that uh, Robert Dean had me put up. And, and, with the black and, dress. With the black dress in your hands, like saying, I did this thing right here. You know what uh -huh. I'm saying? <laughs> So, first, first of all, I'm just going to ask the question, yes. um, where did it all start? Where did it all start? When did you know that you were going to be singing, and, and when did all you over get the, 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 the love for this music we call gospel? Um, first of all, let me just say thank you. I'm excited that um, Dr. LT and Robert Earl Dean asked me to be on the show this morning. I feel like I'm on the show with family because we've been knowing each other for years. About 40 years, years, years almost, yes. So it's an honor for me to um, even be on the show with you all. Well, I think um, I think it all started probably when I was young. Mm -hmm. And I, when I was young, I used to sing the commercials on the TV. Every commercial that came on that had a song, a jingle, I would be singing it. Right. So my parents was like, do you have to sing every commercial? <laughs> yes. <laughs> my baloney has a first name. Hey. Wait, so all, wait, all wait, 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 you got to stop right there. Can, can you give us a little taste about my baloney? I remember that commercial. <laughs> my baloney has a first name. It's O-S-T-A-R. Uh, yes. My baloney has a second name. It's M-A-Y-E-R. <laughs> I like to eat it this every day. I mean, and if you first. ask me while I yeah. say, yep. I say, Oscar Mayer. Yeah. Oscar Mayer has a way. Yes. D-O-L-O-G-N-A. <laughs> -O -O yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, it was that to so all the trailers on TV shows. I knew all the trailers mm -hmm. on the TV shows. So, when I was young, I would sing the commercials. I grew up, as Robert said, in the Church of God in Christ, the grand old Church yes. of God in Christ. Yes, yes. And, um, in Los Angeles at the Mount Island Church of God in Christ, yes. Bishop E.B. Stewart. Mm -hmm. So I then uh, was singing with the children choir, and what happened, they placed my father, he was the assistant pastor at the time, but they placed him at a church in Banning, California. Wow. Mm. Of all places. Yeah, <laughs> from never L.A. to Banning? It. Lord help you, Jesus. <laughs> yes, we had, never, we had never heard of it. <laughs> so... Once he got there, we had to start a choir, and um, we didn't have a lot of people that sang soprano. Everybody, you know, everybody wants to jump in the alto section. Yes. So I was like, well, we have to have some sopranos, and I grew up with kind of, my, my voice has always been heavy and deep, so people always wonder, like, how can you sing so high with your voice that deep? So I actually feel like the Lord gave it to me, mm -hmm. but I began to just train myself to sing soprano. So my dad would take me everywhere with him to sing before he preached. The next thing you know, people were asking, can she come sing? Right. Can she come sing? <laughs> <laughs> so 
so I guess it started there. And um, that was my training. Well, so see, your gift makes room start. for you. That's what the Bible says. Your gift will make room for you. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I want to uh, apologize on behalf of uh, my uncle because I believe he might have been the one that appointed your daddy out there. But let me ask you this question. <laughs> Leaving L.A., going there, tell me uh, how many brothers and sisters did you have and tell me about the cultural shock from L.A. to Banning oh, yes. that took place. Um, I only have one sister, um, an older sister. Mm-hmm. And the reason it really was a cultural shock for us, because, well, number one, we didn't know where it was. So we felt like every time we left, my dad actually traveled from Los Angeles to Banning while he was passing for three, like three and a half years. Wow. So we drove back and forth wow. for three and a half years. So that meant me and my sister, um, we, you know, in junior high at the wow. time. Mm. So we had to... Um, Sunday, Sunday night service, because, you know, we used to have Sunday night yes, service. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. It was, there was no, well, I'm going to go to sleep because I have to be at school in the morning. No, you just, you going to go to church and you're going to wake up. You sleep in the car or you're going to wake up and go to school. Yes, ma'am. So they didn't have even any fast food restaurants out there at the time. Mm. So, so when, when, when you stepped out of the car for the first time, <laughs> what was the thought that came to your spirit woman? Oh, my spirit woman? Not the woman. Yes. <laughs> okay, Lord, where have you taken us? <laughs> have thou forgotten, forsaken us? Because that's the hood. Yes, I feel like we're in the wilderness. Yeah. Out in the wilderness. <laughs> amen, amen. I, I want to say that you have been all around the world, you have been singing and blessing God's people. Commercials, um, movies. But, I, you know, you have had some opportunities, iconic opportunities. Mm -hmm. Can you share some of those with us? Right. Oh, wow. Uh, I think I would have to say some of the most memorable, iconic opportunities for me were um, being able to record and do some movie tracks with Stevie Wonder. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. And I, the reason I say it was awesome because once I, I my solo career started, I did a, a show at Knoxbury Farm. And Stevie happened to be there that day. And wow. I didn't know that he was there. So someone came backstage and got me and they said, Stevie is asking for you. Wow. And I had already sung. So when I went, to where he was, I was like, how did you know I was here? He said, I heard your voice. Oh, wow. And I, I was told like, you. oh, my God. And he was like, I just love you so much. So that, to me, that just, that, to me, um, that was one of the most iconic. And then also to be able to um, sing at Michael Jackson's funeral, that happened uh, with me being a part of, of, um, Andre Crouch, Pastor Andre Crouch, that's his heart. And um, so that, I will never forget that experience. I will never even forget the day that I got the call to see if I was available to do it. I happened to be in the grocery store buying some meat. And I had to run. So the meat guy could you just hold this and I'll be back. I went and got in my car, rolled up the windows, and screamed to the top of my lungs. Like, I couldn't believe it. Wow. Because I was telling someone that I wanted to go to the funeral. Right. And it was a ticket pool. You had to know that type of thing. And to get that call, that whole experience was like this. It was amazing. Uh, around the world, um, going, and you, you just feel like we're going to hear things. But when you get to other countries, you find that people that don't even speak English, but they actually know your name. Yes. You know who you are. And it's, those types of things to me are just amazing. I think also USC started, USC has a gospel hall of fame. Something that they decided to start a few years back. And they called and asked me if I would be a part of the gospel hall of fame. And I'm thinking, like, what? Really? What, what do you want me to do? So to have my name in those archives at USC, that just means a whole lot to me. Uh, the 
honorary doctorate because of what God has done for gospel music. That's just amazing. Um, just singing at places like Radio City Music Hall. Just, I don't know. It's so many. Wow. It's so many. That's so, when you know you're chosen by God. I mean, these opportunities don't become afforded to everybody. You know, and yeah, that's when you know God I, has really called you. And I think because a lot of times I remember, you know, Robert, just thinking like, I don't think like to myself like, oh, I'm oh so great. But when you go to play, Bishop Jake, just embrace you and people like that and Evie and it's just the list goes on and on. And then when people start calling you and I last summer I did a I did a track for a movie for the um, National Geographic Channel. Yes, I saw it. And I was just like, really? And the reason and how that came about was I was in there. We were doing background vocals for the track. And the producer, there was maybe about eight people in the studio. And the producer says, um, are you available today after everyone else leaves? And I said, sure, what's going on? And then he said, I need someone to do this song. He didn't know me from any, anybody. Wow. And so it was just, like you said, Robert, Mike, yes, yeah, just making world. So I'm just grateful, grateful. So, so I'm going to ask you this question, and, and I want you to take a deep breath because uh, this is going to gonna be a tough one, okay? You ready? <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, so how is it that you are so accomplished, mm -hmm. you, you are a mother of your children, mm -hmm. but you happen to produce a mini you? How did you do that one? <laughs> <laughs> Talk about that girl. <laughs> On a call. <laughs> Monica? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. How how did you just spit her out yes, like that? It's the truth. <laughs> you know what? I would have to say uh, on the serious tip, I would just have to say that was God too, because um Robert, you you know, I don't know if Lynn knows, but you know, I had her I had her before I was married. And um it was all God, you know, all those you know, we don't get all due to talk about, you know, the, the, right. what happened and how she got here. Right. But I just have thoughts because the thought was brought to me, you know, have an abortion. And I often think, had I done that, just look what the world would have missed. And she, when I tell you she's anointed and yes. she, just, she blesses me just being around her, you know, me and her have a good time together. It's almost like she's just my best friend. Right. And we can talk, literally talk about anything. So I thank God for her and for her gift. And because, you know, when she first started traveling and things, I just felt myself all over again. And I was like, oh my God, this girl is just just going places that I have been. But God has even done even more for her. She went from um, traveling to Japan and I was able to kind of give her some some tips on Japan because she actually lived there for two years right. in a city that I had already been toured in um, more than once. So wow. I was just like, well, this is what it's going to be like. But, she, you know, she outlasted me. She lived there. That was her first time even moving out of the house. She moved wow. to Japan wow. for two years. And so she went from there to doing cruise ships and things like that. I was like, girl, you go here. Wow, that's so, awesome. Okay, so. Yeah, God has just our family. So I asked you about the mini me, not, not, uh, or mini you. Now, now I got to ask you about uh, uh, your mate that you have. Lord. I want you to tell us, how did, how did the bishop catch you? <laughs> Yeah, okay. he's, he's a he's special one. I'm not sure if he's listening, but if he's listening, you let him tell it. I caught him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you was a Kojic girl that he came to the Kojic church to get. I was Kojic, and I was so saved. I had never been with anybody before. And um, <laughs> This high yellow man come with good hair. Yeah, I happened to, to see his choir um, singing, so I used to kind of follow them. 
it, 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 it kind of happened the same way when I got in the Kirk Carr Singers. I was a fan of the Kirk Carr Singers before I got in there. Right. Just like I was a fan of Voices of Fulfillment and still am. And God has blessed me to sing with, with you all. Yeah, she sings with us. So I happened to see, you know, him somewhere. And I took one of my friends who knew him with me. I was like, they're going to be in concert. Let's go. So she was like, you want to meet him? I was like, girl, heck Yeah. <laughs> So, so, so what you're trying to say is that you took your sanctified self to the concert and she introduced you and you walked up there and said, hello, I'm your future. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't believe that. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just trying to figure, uh, figure it out because you, thank you. Thank you, Robert. Sister, thank you, you sister, you. tell, tell your testimony. Don't now, let now, Leonard put no to, twist on it. I'm really am trying to see Because she was, she was sanctified. I'm and we to, Kojic folk wasn't taught that. But I'm trying to figure he out. He saw her. Exactly. He but saw I'm her. I'm just trying to figure out how he got He her. saw her because she was dressed down. And I guarantee you, she stood out like she does now. <laughs> okay. So, so, so tell us what happened. You got introduced to him and then what happened? Um, we really didn't even date or anything like that. We used to go same places and, you know, things like that. So we weren't even, like, really dating or anything, that, anything like that. So, you know, that happened. Can we talk about something else? <laughs> right. <laughs> and now she's here. Now, now. Tell me about here. tell me about how you transitioned into your solo career. You sung with everybody, and you did the Kirk Hart thing for a long time. I think maybe like a, what eight or nine years. Uh, fourteen. For, <laughs> oh wow! See, she so, serves. Yeah, She's so a servant. Like she been, serves. I have been the longest member of the Kirk Hart Singers from that time um, when we signed with Gospel Center. Yes, because. When he first started, he he was with Light Records. He sure was. So, um, for a few years, and um, once we got with Gospel Centric Records, our first project, everything just took off from there. Uh, we did uh, three projects, three or was it four projects with um, Gospel Centric Records, and that was just a blessing. That began to just bring me before other people, mm -hmm. the industry wise, mm -hmm. um, other producers and promoters. And I was probably the one that Kurt would take everywhere with him. So me and Kurt had a really close bond. Mm -hmm. And um, it just went from there. And I remember telling him that I was going to do a solo project. And we were sitting on a plane, actually, next to one another talking. And he said, so what are you trying to tell me? You're getting out of the group? And I said, well, that's not my intention. It was never my intention to get out of the group. But I guess God had other plans. Mm -hmm. Sort of, you know, well, I, I, I can do both. And uh, I ended up recording. It just kind of pushed me. It, mm -hmm. kind of, it, it pushed me. And um, that's what happened from there. I, once I left the Kirk Carr Singers, I started doing plays. And I did some plays with Michael Matthews. And mm -hmm. I did a play with a local uh, Daz Patterson. It turned into a, a movie. And then I... Uh, Traveled a few years with Jay Moss, and then I joined up with Pastor Andre Krauss, and I was with Pastor Andre Krauss until he passed. So that, to me, being with Andre Krauss was just, wow. I can't tell you, because I loved him from a child. Right. So it was just amazing to me. It's just amazing of your journey, because, um, like I said, I met you when I was 15, and you were in Riverside Mass Choir. And yeah, and you you, you always you always stood out one because your voice was so powerful for this little this little figure, and we were like, how is this coming out of this little lady? And then the <laughs> then after the events, you would always show us being Eddie Baltrip and Voice of Fulfillment so much love. So your personality captivated us as much as your voice, and I think that's a wonderful trait for someone that is older than you that is like a mentor, you know, slash inspiration, I think more of our gospel artists who are in those positions should be more like that. Yes, I try to encourage when people ask me to come places uh, or young people talk to me, I always try to encourage younger artists to just stay humble. You know, if you stay humble, it'll take you 
so far. And don't th- don't ever try to think of yourself more than than what you are. That's the Bible. You know, God, the Bible says that God will exalt you mm-hmm. in due season, mm-hmm. even when you a lot of times don't know you're being exalted. Because I have a lot of people tell me, you know, you know, you're a legend, and you know that. In gospel music, just everybody knows you. Everywhere you go, everybody knows you. Mm-hmm. If they don't remember a lot of the other Kirkar singers by name, it's like you stand out. People know who Siobhan Wells yes, is. Yes, they do. Yes, they to do. To me, it's like if that wasn't something that I just tried to push myself out there like that, but it was just something that God gave me through um, just me remaining just who I am, you know, and, and being humble. So. I just thank God for where he has positioned me in place. Yeah. Well, one of the things I want to say about you, uh, Dr. Wells, is is that um, when you come to an event, you're so unassuming. Yep. Uh, you, you, it's not like um, I need to be sat on the front row, uh, uh, I need to have Perrier water, any of that stuff. When you come to anything that I've ever been at, you've always come with a servant's heart. And that's what I think makes us love you so yes. much because of how you – just treat even the people that don't know you. Uh, by the time they they get to be introduced to you, they feel like they're old friends with yep. you. Let me ask you this question: As you are preparing or doing in your career right now, what's up next for you? Um, people keep asking me if I'm ready to record, if I want to record again. So I'd like to jump back into the studio. I went through several years with having issues with my, my throat and the doctor ended up telling me, you know, you really need to rest your throat. You have these nodules on your throat and you have this. So I'm just like, well, I don't want to have to have surgery. Mm-hmm. But, and I told him, I said, well, my voice is what I do. So mm-hmm. I don't know how I'm going to be able to rest that. But God has given me so many other things other outlets so uh, people keep telling me a book is <laughs> just so I don't know. I'm just gonna be available and ready to do whatever God has for me to do. You know? Amen. Amen. I wanna just let you know some of the celebrities that are on listening to you. Yes. Everett Drake says good morning, Doctor Wells. Hi Everett Yes, yes. yes. Lamar Campbell is on here. Say you one of his favorites. <laughs> Yeah, and, and yeah. he said, love, First Lady. You also have Sonia Griffin on. Oh, yeah, they've and, been friends and, for and years. And Angela <laughs> Bennett. Angela, Angela Bennett is on. And so everybody is tapping in uh, just to say that they love hearing the history and yes. that they love you. Yes. I love them. I love them. When I tell you God has bonded me and so many other artists, so many other artists, even a lot of artists that are up and coming. That I, I did something last year, um, the Dove Award, and um, I got a chance because I love other artists, the younger artists, and I'm thinking they probably don't know who I am. Mm-hmm. So I'm just sitting, I'm just sitting in a corner, <laughs> just waiting until the time for me to do what I did. And um, they came up, they'll come up and say, like, you look really familiar. Are you Siobhan? Well, and I'm just yes. oh my god, I love you. And I'm just thinking like, you guys are so young. Why do you guys even know who I am? You know, but you'd be surprised that, that even some younger artists that just love yes. history and love what we've done for gospel music just they love it. So I just thank God for opportunities to be able to share and just love on them. It's, just, it's, it's great. Yes, well, whenever you get ready to record, you can do live in San Diego because you have your choir, Eddie Boucher, for fulfillment, one of the best in the business. So that's a hint. Yes. Praise him. <laughs> you, 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 see, you see how he did that? And, 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 yes. And right at the same point, he excluded me out of the whole production. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I actually have my shh. Am I, 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 I have I it ready. I know. You always have it ready. You've been working on it for a while. Yes. 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 And I've been under the tutelage of Robert O.D., my choir director here. Yes. He's, he's been, he's been getting better with his vocals. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, Siobhan, uh, if people want to find you, book yes. you, have you come, 
And um, I and I, I don't I don't know. So let me just ask this because when I watch service on uh, from your church, mm -hmm. uh, I see you saying, but I see you preaching too. Yes, you So are are you are you doing uh, like the trifecta now? Uh, we can book you to sing, preach, and exhort. And she's a host. You thank you, Robert Earl Jennings. Yes, yeah, you can. They can book me to do it all. They can book me to do it all. I, I do weddings. I mean, when I talk about, I not so much singing, but I, sing. I coordinate, um, I preach, I sing, I host. I just, I do it all. Amen. So people can actually, they can, they can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and all those other social media outlets, but don't get it easy if they get in touch with um, my assistant, Valencia Steve. They can catch her on social media. Bishop Kenneth Wells, mm -hmm. contact me. Yeah. Uh, what's the song yeah, you're, we're going to push? Bishop Wells is um, over the industry um, network. Right. So people a lot of times know how to get in touch with him, and people can get in touch with me through him. Now, now I want to do a sidebar um, before we play the song. Bishop Wells sent us uh, the song He Reigns, and we want you to pitch that. But before we do that, uh, since you kind of know him fairly well, could you see when we can get an interview with him? Because you know his agent won't call us back yet. Come on, Holy Ghost, <laughs> speak. So I can be the girl, and I can help. I say, help make that happen. Amen. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Will you introduce this song, He Reigns, to the world? Okay, He Reigns. He Reigns. I love this song. It was uh, probably one of the first singles, and it's actually the first song on the project. It was written by my brother, Khalil Newport of Buffalo, New York, he's in uh, Atlanta. I was written by him, and he gave it to me. So enjoy this song and know that God reigns in truth. A young lady, I think it's her birthday today. Is her name Samantha? Is yes. It? I don't know her, but I think it's her birthday. And she's born. But just know that God reigns. And to everybody out there, just be blessed and enjoy the song. Amen. None other than Amen. the incomparable Miss Siobhan, Siobhan Wells. Wells. And the song is He Reigns right here on GODRadio1.com.